Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is history taking for ribs. It's going to be similar to taking history for a chest x-ray. You'll always want to include a full chest history with a rib series because you have APA chest. So you'll have to do your normal routine chest history. But some things that are very specific to uh, just rib x-rays are, first of all, you want to know the nature of the complaint. Is it acute or is it chronic? That's kind of a, a pretty obvious one. You know, what happened? Was it recent? Is this been for a long time? And you want to know if there was an injury, how and when did it happen? Was it a fall? Was it a, a stabbing? You know, what kind of get a general idea so that you know if you're going to be looking for um, a pleural effusion or a pneumothorax or it kind of gives you a, an idea. Also, you want to know location, very specific location. This is the point when you're taking the history that you will put a BB on the patient. First thing, don't do the chest x-ray and then put the BB on. We want it on the chest. That is your guideline. So if they can pinpoint right where it hurts or even a general area, put the BB in the middle of the general area of pain. Um, if there's a bruise, if there's a laceration, any of those things you want to mark with your BB. Um, if they have a couple different sites, maybe one in the back, one in the front, it's okay to use two BBs. That's you know, if that's really the best way to show the doctor where it is. It's, ribs are extremely difficult to identify without some kind of marker. It's really hard to say. I mean, we've all seen orders where it says, you know, pain at level of seventh rib. And you put the BB on it, it's like the twelfth rib. It's really difficult to identify and describe like, oh, they have pain three inches under their right armpit. Just put the BB on when you're taking their history. This is also going to determine if you're going to do your study AP or PA. Um, it's also going to help determine based on your PA chest x-ray if you are doing upper ribs or lower ribs. So that BB placement is going to be a really key component in determining how you do the rest of the rib series. So make sure when you're taking that history, location, get the BB on right away. The third thing is as associated with any trauma, you always want to ask them, are they having difficulty breathing? Are they coughing up any blood? Um, those are really going to be key identifiers for the doctors to help kind of rule things out, cardiac involvement and that sort of thing. So you want to make sure you ask uh, difficulty breathing, if they're having tenderness anywhere, you know, tenderness on inspiration, and then coughing up blood. Uh, so make sure you kind of include those key things after you do your general chest history taking. On to protocols. Uh, we're going to start with the upper ribs. Um, they are kind of the foundation for the rib series. No matter where the pain is, where you put your BB, you will always do these first four pictures. Everything, even if they're having severe lower rib pain, you know it's way down here, it's almost on the hip, it's so low, you will still do upper ribs. You will always do these four pictures. Okay, these are the foundation of the series. Picture number one is always a PA chest. If the patient cannot stand, an AP chest upright if possible. We are looking for fluid accumulation, possible pneumos. So as upright as possible, even if you have to sit them in the bed. But ideally, a, an upright PA chest with that BB on. Even if you have to leave the collimation open a little bit, patient has a little bit of tissue and your BB's way out here, it's okay, make sure you get that BB on the picture because that's, that's your key image to determine what kind of series you'll be doing. So PA chest, first of all. You have some rules for upper ribs and rules for lower ribs and it's what kind of separates them and makes them different. For upper ribs, you stand the patient up. So all of these, if possible, should be done upright. Okay? Whether it's standing up, sitting on a stool, sitting on the bed, try to get them in an upright position. This is going to help get the diaphragm where it needs to be. Um, we also are going to do all of our upper rib series on inspiration. Pushes the diaphragm down as well as having them in an upright position. Allows us to see more ribs in kind of a, a similar contrast and a similar density. Upper ribs for technique, we want a low KV range, about 65 to 70 KV. Even if your patients are really large, if you start to increase that KV, 
with the differences in densities between the ribs and the lungs, you'll start to burn out enough of the lung that we now cannot see rib detail, the edges of the ribs. So we want kind of a lower 65 to 70 kV and then an appropriate mass to kind of balance that out. The fourth rule that we have for upper ribs, 72 inches. All your ribs images will be at 72. Put it at 72 for your pH chest, leave it there for the rest of your upper ribs. It makes it super easy, leave it at 72. It really gets rid of a lot of magnification, which is an issue on, on rib images sometimes, especially when we start to do obliques on bigger patients, they're quite a ways away from the bucky. So 72 inches, uh, low KV, upright inspiration. Those are your four rules for an upper series. So the four pictures that we will have, we start with our PA chest, normal PA chest. BB needs to be on, okay? You'll still center like a chest, you'll collimate appropriately for a chest, accounting for the fact that you need to show the BB. Um, but a, a chest is a chest. Use a, a normal chest technique, same as we always do. Now your next three pictures are what really make it key for an upper rib series. So the pictures that you want to do, <clears throat> I don't have them all up here, but you're going to determine based on where that BB is placed, whether you are going to be doing them AP or PA. You'll always do the same three pictures, it's just the patient position that will change. So the three pictures that you need, whether they are AP or PA oriented, is you need one image straight on, no patient rotation. So whether you have the patient facing the board or facing you, it doesn't matter. You want to put the area of interest wherever the BB is located closest to the image receptor. Um, typically, well, it kind of seems like we see is that it's kind of on the side more. Use your judgment. You know, what do you think is going to get it closest to the board? If it's right on the side, probably doesn't matter which way, which way you go. Um, but you will do one picture straight on. Um, once you determine whether it's AP or PA, you have to determine which side. Is it a right rib series, a left rib series, or a bilateral rib series? So make sure that you're centering to the side of interest. I've been reviewing a lot of rib series and a lot of them are, it, it's a definitely a right rib series, right rib pain, and they've got both sides. I mean, they've got the whole thing on all of their pictures. If you don't need that, if it's a right rib series, get them centered to the right side and collimate in. We know where the widest margin of the ribs is. We know that we have to at least show the posterior aspect, which connects with the spine. So you can kind of determine collimation based on that. Sternum is midline, outer margin of the ribs, center halfway between. So for your upper series, start after your PHS, you will start with a, just a straight position for your patient, a true AP or PA centered to the side of interest with the BB, the area of interest closest to the image receptor. So it's just a straight picture. That's all it is, collimate in. Now another thing that I've been seeing happen a lot in these is patients' arms are in the way. And we get arm tissue in the lateral margin. That's where we see most rib injuries is right on the side. So make sure that you, you know, have the patient hold on if they need to or arms out to their sides or whatever you need to do to get those arms removed from the area of interest. Uh, so that's your first one, either an AP or PA of the affected side. Okay, pretty straightforward, just collimate in. Um, on these, on your um, upper series, we do have to include, you want to center about the level of T7, just like a chest x-ray, and you absolutely have to see at least ribs 1 through 10, similar to a chest x-ray. So if you take your chest x-ray, and this is why we do these at 72, you have to be able to see down through 10th rib, same thing with your true rib image. So really the only thing that's changing, you're still centered at T7, you're still at 72 inches, your technique is different. You know, and you'll collimate in to the side of interest. So this was a great chest x-ray for this rib image, for the first picture, all you do is slide your centering over and collimate in. And that would be your first picture. But you have to get at least ribs one through 10, that's, that's pretty critical on those.